Hi friends, this is Marilyn from TarotClarity.com and I'm finally continuing my series that I began last year um, reconciling the numbers of the PIP cards um, to meaning um, corresponding to their, their suit where we've accomplished the fool through the empress and now we're on the fourth card, the emperor. I also use different decks um, to illustrate the evolution of the TDM style. And uh, I've changed that as well to make it more interesting for myself and for you as well. Instead of using a Visconti uh, a variety for the Italian deck from the 1600s, which is considerably later than when the Visconti came out, I'm using a Tarocchi Fina Dalla Torre, which was... Um, came out of Bologna in the early to mid-1600s. I'm using, I'm referencing a tarot of Paris, which is the earliest of the French varieties that have similarities to, t to the uh, tarot of Marseille. It's not technically a tarot of Marseille because it's not out of Marseille, it's out of Paris, but there are similarities. And then finally with the Pierre Madinet, Tarot of 1709, we clearly see the manifestation of a TDM-style deck out of, out, of, uh, out of France. One way that you can assign meaning to a number um, of a pip card would be to align it with the meaning of the Major Arcana card with the corresponding number. In this case, we're looking at fours. So we're looking at the fours of coins, batons, cups, and swords. And we're also looking at the fourth card of the Major Arcana, which in this case would be the Emperor. Now, if we look at the Emperor historically, and, and if we think of who he is and how he's represented by and large in TDM style cards, we see that there's usually a shield, there's usually a helmet or a crown, there's some type of orb um, and, a, and a scepter, you know, that, to indicate that he's got a position of authority. The, the, the shield will often reference a eagle on it and with, with wings facing down rather than up. Um, and that's a reference to, I guess, the uh, Holy Roman Emperor, Empire and the Habsburg dynasties and... Um, it's kind of like a, 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 a symbol for an individual with great power. I can't say that I see the eagle represented in the Paris um, deck, nor in this particular Italian deck, but they are in other you know, Italian decks. The Visconti decks definitely have an eagle represented somewhere on the emperor, on a shield. There may be some manifestation of an eagle in a in a what could be considered a shield in this area, but that would be a stretch. I don't really know that I see that. I'm just trying to look at this card with a magnifying glass, trying to see if I see any any reference to an eagle, and, and I don't know that there is. But let's think of what an emperor is. Clearly, an emperor is a man in a position of authority. He's got great power. He's got to be a fair-minded individual. He's got to be a stable individual because if he's not stable, we have a lunatic tyrant and we can't have that. Um, and so there's a certain amount of power, prestige, um, responsibility that's associated with the emperor. It's interesting that he was assigned the number four. Now, on the Italian decks, they were not numbered, so who knows what number they would have you know, assigned to the emperor, although the French had to have gotten their order from someplace, so maybe they were referencing their understanding of how the Italians played their cards. But by the time it becomes a, by the time the Tarot of Marseille clearly manifests itself, the emperor is clearly denoted with the number four. Also, it's very interesting that in the Tarot of Marseille, the emperor often has the posture of a number four. So he's seated in a solid throne, and his body posture is a four. Now, I don't see that in the Tarot of Paris because he's standing here, 
And in the Italian deck, I don't see that posture either, but he is seated squarely on a chair. And he is front facing here, which means that he's approachable. Um, he's less approachable in these two decks, these two French decks. So if the emperor has the attributes of being fair minded and strong and reasonable, somewhat approachable, um, where does where does the association come from for the emperor to be associated with the number four? Well, we can say that from the earliest of times, the number four, um, almost since forever, has signified some type of solid human experience for us. For example, you know, many of our more solid structures have four legs or four wheels. Um, our buildings, or that you know, they do have uh, a roof and a floor, but you know, many of our buildings could be said to have four sides. You know, not counting the roof and the and the floor. Um, most of our most descriptive and profound language come in four letters. <laughs> you know, when we really want to show that we really mean something, well, it'll be a, you know often in a four letter expletive. Um, I do know that there's four. Um, what's the word? There's four um, applications in math. There's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. There's four elements, you know, such as fire, air, water, earth. In some parts of the world, particularly where I live, because I'm, you know, part of the Western experience, we have four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. It's not necessarily a universal thing, but enough people on the planet probably experience the same thing. I know that leap year happens every four years. Um, I know that there's generally four weeks to a lunar, a lunar month, you know, four cycles of uh, seven days. There's four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. If we say someone has been given a square deal, it means that he got a fair deal. Um, if we reference religion, um, depending on your, your, your persuasion, you, we could say that there's four Gospels, there's four horsemen of the apocalypse. We could say that there are four corners of the world, which I guess also references the four cardinal directions of the compass points. We can say that there's four castes of society. Certainly when the, the, the deck was created, they may have been referencing a merchant class, a working class, a clergy, and you know the nobility. That could have been what they were referencing when they were creating these um, suits. We could... Uh, hmm... Oh, what else? I didn't know this, but I learned this when I was researching the number four, that with the exception of flies, all winged creatures have four wings. And not only do they have four wings, but they go through four stages of metamorphosis. So that's particularly interesting to me. I learned when I turned 60 and I was learning about um, uh, Chinese um, signs of the zodiac, because 60 is a significant year, and that's, I was looking into it. I learned that the number four sounds a lot like their word, and in some Asian cultures, for the word um, death. And so the number four in those cultures might have a little bit of a sting to it, like the number 13 might mean to us, you know. Um, that's something that's not universal, It's, but it is an interesting human experience. And if you're reading for someone who would have that experience, it's good to know that, right? I know that IV is the symbol. It has some reference to the planet Jupiter. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I do know that it does reference the planet Jupiter. And I think it's very interesting that in some Belgian and Swiss decks that the emperor was replaced by the... Um, um, by the by a figure known in mythology as Jupiter with the number one fours or four ones or uh, IV is also the, the way to cor correctly write Roman numeral four. Um, 
nature is regarded as four dimensional because we have, you know, the three dimensions of occupied space with the added dimension of time. Um, and so there's a lot of things that we can associate the number four with that do seem to identify with the qualities of an emperor. You know, a man in charge, a man of great power would be someone who had many of the attributes that we just described. Now let's look at the individual suits and see. Some, some, some people would take the suit, like this, the number four um, coin, and apply their understanding of what that suit represents with the meaning of the number four of the major arcana. So if we were to take the meaning of the emperor as a solid, dependable, reliable, approachable, fair-minded individual, um, then we could say that the number four of coins might be a fair um, a fair allotment, you know, there could be a return on an investment. Um, it might be a good time to start saving, you know. Four is a number of manifestations. It's not just like a gathering. It's, it's like, you know, something has actually not only begun, but it's actually taken place. So four coins could strongly suggest that there's been, um, you know, an actual return of investment um, in, in some regard. Or it could be something related to your job that, you know, something that you've invested a lot of time and energy in is finally beginning to pay off in your work, in your work world. If we have the four of uh, batons, it depends on how you view the batons as a suit. I see batons, as a lot of people do, as a fiery, very creative, passionate suit, depending on the number it can be fickle or it could be stable, you know. Four of batons, if we relate it to identifying it with the emperor, we could say it is um, creative energy that's manifesting itself. It could be something as uh, simple as a, a coordinated sports game, you know, a group of friends getting together to play a game, you know. It could be something like that. It could be... Um, Plans for a room that you're building or a house that or a structure that you're building is actually, you know, the ground stone has been laid, something like that. The four of cups could, you know, definitely suggest that a gathering, if you, if you think of cups as an emotional suit or a suit of poetry or art, artistic expression, dependence on people, it could be um, a gathering of like-minded individuals, sensitive people, um, it could be that, uh, you know, you're going to a poetry reading. It could be, uh, you know, that, uh, that a group of people are going to be singing together in, the, in a gospel choir or, you know, something like that. It, it, could, it, it could really mean a variety of, of things depending on the question that's coming at the reader, you know, that you're, you know, how you're, what, what the question is or what the intent is and how you're applying that suit to the uh, to the question. And finally, with the swords, I think of swords as assertion, as sometimes aggression, um, definitely as um, the, the realm of the intellect. It could reference um, a court hearing, a court case, something coming, you know, uh, something related to uh, law that's actually happening, or a document is going, it is going to manifest or be presented to you, or a court date, or something like that. It could also mean that there's actually going to be a confrontation between um, a group of people or conflict within a group of people. So it can mean a, a few different things. So you, what I'm trying to illustrate with this series is that you can oftentimes look to the Major Arcana card, look at his meaning or its meaning or her meaning, and then apply it to your understanding of the pip card, you know, the particular suit card with that particular number. Now, that's not to say that you can't be motivated to interpret the pip cards in a different way. You know, you could be seduced. Not, I don't want to use the word seduced, but you could be um, impressed by the way, uh, you know, a figure 
X's or, you know, has a, has a cross, you know, like a X marks, marks the spot. And that might distract you entirely and have you go in a different direction by instead of saying, well, it has to do with a collaboration or some type of manifestation of a sports event or something like that. You can actually look at it as a physical symbol, you know, you know, um, you, you could see it as multiplication. You could see it as a barrier. So it, it all depends not just on, you know, you don't have to be as strict with um, Tarot of Marseille or, or Pip style cards because you are looking at it visually as well as reconciling numbers to suits or numbers to um, the major arcana card that it corresponds to. If you if you look at Rider Waite Smith cards, you know, clones or, or cards that are inspired by the Rider Waite Smith system, you're kind of locked into you're definitely locked into the meaning of the cards. I mean, you can't look at the Three of Swords, for example, and, and say, oh, this is like a, um, a group effort that's going to, um, you know, be anything other than a negative experience, you know. Whereas the Three of Swords of, of, a, of a pip style deck could have positive references you know, the Ten of Swords, you know, the sword suit, particularly of Rider Waite Smith, there's so much violence and so much aggression, especially in the higher order numbers, that it's kind of hard to get away from that interpretation. You, there's no flexibility, in other words. And TDM really gives you that flexibility because you're not just reconciling a number with a suit or a number with, um, or the suit with, you know, um, with a major arcana card, but you can also just look at the, the card itself for its own intrinsic design. So you have multiple ways that you can look at and interpret the TDM style cards and you're not locked into one definition for them. And that's why it's very liberating. And that's why I'm trying to get the word out to as many people who will listen. And when I teach class, I teach with the TDM deck in mind any rate, the next card up will be the Pope, and I hope it's not as long as it took me to get this one, but I um, do hope you bear with me, and I appreciate that you tuned in for this reading, uh, for this particular video. And until next time, um, check me out on Instagram. I, I can be found at the Tarot Reader on Instagram, and my Tarot website and blog is tarotclarity.com. Until next time, peace.